Good afternoon, March 23rd, 2021, and uh, I'm looking at the blooms of a Mexican plum tree. I told my students last fall, I actually shot a video on the Mexican plum tree, and when it was uh, actually losing leaves in October, I told you in March, this tree would light up the forest with white blooms. It would see a barren forest, which is pretty much barren yet. No leaves on the, the major trees, but I said that uh, we're going to see the Mexican plum in full anthesis or flower. So I'm going to give you a close up view of the flowers. You see the five pebbles, the many stings or nail parts, and Maybe in a, uh, you can see the pistol in the center there. Um, here's our bark of our Mexican plum, same tree. And uh, just a few branches with flowers on them. So it's kind of a disappointment, but nonetheless, we've got bloom. So. Um, we're going to walk around, see if we can see some other things and uh, uh, that show us signs of spring. The plum tree, the Mexican plum, is in the, uh, the family known as Rosaceae, or the rose family. They're known to uh, produce their flowers first, take care of the reproduction, and then leaf out later. So there it is, Prunus mexicana. Uh, been a difficult winter for we had ice storms we had snowstorms and we had some uh, really uh, major freezes so there it is um, Mexican plum Prunus Mexicana I want to show you a branch maybe you can see it if you look closely on that little dead branch you can see the little fingers uh, my college people that study um, fungi will call that dead man's fingers so I haven't seen those for a while so that's kind of cool oh jeepers here's some along with the flowers maybe you see them. yes dead man's fingers the genus is Xylaria. Looks as though it's a, some type of uh, saprophytic fungi. Dead man's fingers. Good stuff. There it is. The flowers. Let's give you a close up view of, the, of a branch that has a few more flowers. Well, not very many. Sun's getting right in the eye, so this is like a, here's a pretty good branch. And once again, not exactly lighting up the forest, but there they are. It's spring. It's time to move back into the forest from the greenhouse and the garden. Spend a little time in the greenhouse and the garden, and a little bit of time in the forest. So well, let's see what else we have here nearby. I see lots of dead branches with their foliose lichens. Uh, it's a pretty good sized branches that fell off during the October freeze or ice storm. And let's look for some more signs of life. Oh, jeepers. Looks like a little um, rough leaf dogwood. I don't know if you can see the, the mouse ear leaves are opposite and simple on the branch. Okay, Cornus drummondii. I saw something over here that might be worth looking at. Hope you don't get the old jeepers. Another early one. Look at this. Hmm. 
this looks like a little bit of a, a small critigus or oh, probably the most common si size in the forest. Critigus is another member of the rose family. I'm not sure about this one in terms of flower. Uh, it may have already flowered this. As you can see, it's leafing out ready for good year of photosynthesis. So there's your hawthorn. Same family as the Mexican plum. See what else we can find. So we've seen uh, rough-leaf dogwood in leaf. We've seen Corinus mexicana in flower. And then uh, our hawthorn, genus Critigus, in leaf already. Okay. Well, look at this. This doesn't look very good. We've got uh, our Yopon holly. Alex uh, Vomitoria. It's an evergreen that is not doing very well. So I snap one of these branches. It seems to be somewhat brittle. I'm not sure. I think it'll come back and come out strong this spring and summer. So, Yopon Holly. Uh, still in. Stone leaf, of course, it's a, an evergreen. You're seeing uh, cedars in the background. Of course, they're evergreens. Looking for other signs of life. There's our big old monster black hickory tree, Caria texana. On the side of the fence. Remember last fall we called the monster uh, black hickory tree. Uh, moving away from the, the drain. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to see in terms of of life. Everything's still resting. like races area still marked I'm gonna pick up some of the stuff we'll play tomorrow here's our big oak tree big post oak Quercus stellata I'm hoping to see another Mexican plum tree. Lots of big branches due to the ice storm. Heavy ice on their limbs and leaves last fall. We're going to let them rot right in the soil. Isn't that nice of us? We'll try to drag them away from the, the trail that we had marked. But... Uh, We'll leave them be. Let them rot and replace those uh, nutrients that uh, the soil loses. Keep it nice and fertile. Still navigating through the the branches here. I'm looking for some sign of life. I I remember a hawthorn tree nearby our big two oaks or what we call twin oaks and I'm not seeing anything seems kind of odd doesn't it we have a hawthorn on the other side that's in that's leafed out but I'm not seeing it here oh jeepers there it is so, oh, not exactly uh, lighting up the forest, but here's that uh, that hawthorn. Oh, it's rather beautiful. You got to admit, doing its thing. Brand new leaves, 
new chlorophyll molecules, uh, fresh air, taking in that CO2 and making sugar. And we'll see what they do in terms of flowering here as we work our way through spring. Uh, once again, you get you can see some of the branches have uh, the thorns are armed just like the, the Mexican plum. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. There's a our trunk. So good find. What have we seen so far? We've seen uh, the Mexican plum in flower. We'll leaf out later. We've seen critigus in leaf or the hawthorn. We've seen the small leaves of Cornus Drummondi out of the rough leaf dogwood. And not, that's about it. The other trees, as I've said, are still resting. Let's see if we can find a bud here. Looking for a big terminal bud on our hickory tree. Now let's look at this bud right here. This is a terminal bud. It's right at the end, right? Let me get my camera out there. That little bud there is encasing probably two or three compound leaves. Remember the our black hickory Acari Texana has uh, alternate and compound leaves. So that's a pretty good uh, pretty good wrap job, right? As we as we uh, watch them this spring. The sugars will flow from the the trunk, the, from the actually the roots to the trunk, to the twig, and nourish that bud and give it enough chemical energy uh, to develop those embryonic leaves and and then emerge as uh, uh, compound leaves that we'll see for the rest of the spring. Looks like another hawthorn that's kind of struggling. Actually not doing too bad. Once again, don't forget a member of the Rose family. I don't, I don't expect too much uh, activity in terms of the oaks or the hackberries or the hickories yet. See a lot of acorns on the fourth floor. And I imagine some of them have been worked over pretty heavily by the, the deer. Here's a, a result of the ice storm last October. One of our cedar trees has gone down, which is, no, that's okay. They don't belong inside the forest anyway, do they? All right, let's check on our mulberry. I don't expect a whole lot in terms of the mulberry. We can look at the bark. Here it is. Not very pretty in terms of the trail right now. Looks like another hickory. Oh, jeepers. You can see some botanists has been in here cutting twigs to show his students, right? More terminal buds. Uh, should have gone back. Oh, jeepers. Who needs leaves, right? Who needs flowers when you have that type of bark? Tell me, oh, look at that. Kind of a reddish salmon, elongated plates they look like they're peeling at the bottom aren't they that is our red mulberry morris rubra correct Let's see what the rest of it looks like yeah. 
good luck. There's not a whole lot of branches left on this tree, but man, it's a beauty. All right, lots of hickories. I've seen some mosses. Oh, look at that growth habit of that hickory. Isn't that wonderful? Man, it's just growing laterally and just kind of tracking the sun, doing anything it can uh, to find sunlight for photosynthesis. Looks like the leaves are, are rotting pretty good in the, on the forest floor. Providing all that good nitrogen, phosphorus, and other key elements for good growth. Here's our Cornistromundii. Look how straight those uh, stems are. Not many leaves on that one, or hardly at all. Alright, uh, rounding the band. Let's see if we can see anything on these. Uh, Elm trees. Elm trees should be in flower. And I think we have one right here that's not really doing much at all. The flowers of the elm trees are, oh, not exactly beautiful, but they uh, they are flowers. They have both male and female parts, and. Uh, something to look at used for identification purposes I want to show you this mat of uh, bryophytes or moss you're looking at the gametophyte generation right there remember the gametophyte generation is the dominant generation in mosses and unlike the trees that surround the, the moss here uh, they they lack vascular tissue or the, the xylem and the phloem Looks like we have some cleanup. Hope you guys will uh, clean as you go this spring. Wow. What a great afternoon. Didn't get to see much. Oh, yeah, the Mexican plum didn't show us a, bu a bunch, but it was there. You know, I've never seen uh, too many of those trees, and I certainly haven't seen one in flower today, other than that uh, that one we already filmed. All right, I guess our trail's up here. We're gonna move, remove some of those flaggings tomorrow. Here's our post oak that I saw probably eight or nine years ago that hadn't been there too long as a dead tree and uh, every time I come out here it looks like it's there's less and less of it thanks to the saprophytic fungi oh look at this look at this we've got uh, another tree with lots of simple leaves, and notice how glossy they are. It's a little shrub that only has rusty black haw or viburnum refugium. Good find. Good find. It's spring. It's getting there. Uh, there's our post oak. Dead post oak. Oh, look at this. Look at those guys. They're working hard. I believe they, believe they call those turkey tail uh, fungi. They're saprophytic. And we know they're absorption feeders. And they have cell walls with chitin. And they're just a neat, neat, neat kingdom that most students enjoy learning about. All right, I'm kind of ending uh, the trail here. 
A uh, few signs of spring. Not much life yet. Everything's still resting, except for the cedar trees. Let's look for one more tree. We have a pretty good size. Not really but that big, but uh, red elm or um, almost rubra. Let's see if we can find some flowers. And I'm not seeing it. This is one that one tree that. Uh, leaning over a little bit so not much to see there maybe one more thing we could check on our prickly pear which is actually a, a woody plant and uh, there's always that population that we can see and oh there it is that's Opuntia and I'm not sure about the epithet that, that doesn't matter but I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you and God bless you.